Hello everybody, my name is Super Rogue of Marquis Design and welcome to my seminar about size coding on the Pico 8. Now before we go into the size coding part, let's look at the Pico 8 itself. So the Pico 8 is a fantasy console, which essentially means it's a virtual console with virtual specification, but it runs on modern day machines such as Windows, Mac OS X and even the web. So the specifications for this machine are a display of 128 by 128 pixels in 16 different colors, 32K of cartridge memory, four channels of chip music, it's coded in Lua, it has 256 sprites, as well as a map that you could use for games or demo. It is a, a commercial product, which means it's not free. You have to pay about $15 for it to get it. You can buy it on the website or on itch.io. And once you've bought the product, you can install it and you'll be greeted with the following screen. So this can be a bit intimidating. So the first thing we're going to do is press the escape key. And this brings us to the meat of the Pico 8. The Pico 8 consists of different tools that we can use. This is the code editor. There's also a sprite editor, which gives us like the 16 colors of the Pico 8 that we are able to use. There is a map editor, a sound effect editor, as well as a music tracker. But for size coding, we're going to focus mainly on the code editor. It displays a cursor, uh, the number of lines and the, and the column that we are at. And on the bottom right, there's some additional statistics. This is a token count. This is a very Pico 8 specific thing. We're not going to worry about this. There is a character count, which is going to be important for us, as well as a compressed size which we'll skip for now as well. So I'll put this on the character count and, and li this list, the number of characters that we can use. So the main thing for the Pico 8, the main function that is called, is called the draw function. And this is called 30 or 60 times per second. And here we can uh, draw some shapes. For example, let's draw a circle on the center of the screen. So that means 64 by 64. We have a radius of eight and we'll use color five for this. We press Ctrl R to run it. And there is our little circle front. We can also have a circle that's filled by the circle fill command. And there is the same circle, but filled. Well, can we only draw circles? No, we can't. Um, there is a nice Pico 8 cheat sheet that we can use. It lists some of the commands, uh, some Lua stuff like the operators, functions, if statement, loops and so forth. Uh, the special functions, which includes our draw function, the 16 colors plus the number for the Pico 8 palette. We can set pixels with P set or get pixels with P get and draw rectangles, filled rectangles, circles, filled circles, a line, Clear the screen, have some camera and clipping functions, and there's even some functionality for sprites, input, and sound. So let's get back to our Pico 8 and our little circle. So if we want to have a moving circle on the screen, we can, for example, assign t to time, and maybe multiply this by 8. And then instead of drawing it on the center, we can draw it on t. And there is a little moving circle. Already pretty nice. So, uh, for, well, not all, but uh, some of the demo scene effects will be needing to update every pixel on the screen. These are called pixel effects. Uh, for example, a plasma or a tunnel is uh, one of those effects. So let's not uh, start with a plasma, um, which is done uh, uh, quite often. But let's start with something more interesting. Um, and before I'll tell you what it is, uh, let's fill up all of the pixels on our screen first. So instead of using a time function, I'm going to keep track of my own time. So I do T is T plus one, and I'll set up two different for loops. So I mentioned the resolutions for the Pico 8 is 128 by 128. So we'll set up our for loops accordingly. Also close down these loops. 
and we'll have a color, say N, and N is X plus Y plus T. Then we'll use the PSET function to draw this color N. And what do you know? We have diagonal bars scrolling across the screen. Not very interesting, but at least it's a good start for uh, programming more advanced effects. So, um, like I mentioned earlier, the Pico 8 palette uh, are these 16 colors. And as you can see, they are not ordered in a really nice uh, fashion. Uh, like, for example, the Sweetie 16 palette on the Tick 80. It has some nice color ramps. These are not uh, such a nice ramp. So we have to do a little uh, index juggling or keep a table for uh, different colors and have sort of a custom palette that we can use. So let's see if I can juggle uh, the indexes a bit um, uh, to get some better colors. For example, I can start at color five and then use six and seven and maybe the red as well. So I'll add, I'll do modulo three plus five. And I can divide this a bit, say by eight. And here are our three grayscale colors that uh, we can use. Uh, there were some other, um, Oh, yeah, so let's start with a pattern first, so we can see some other shapes. So instead of just um, like adding these numbers for diagonal, we can also use different uh, bitwise operations, like for example, the AND function, which gives us a AND pattern. If I divide it with a smaller number, it'll be a bit smaller, still not very nice. We can do it an XOR pattern, there are two of these guys. Still not very nice because we're only using three colors. So there is some other uh, juggling that you can do. I'll share one of these index juggle things for now. Um, and five minus four. Yes, this should give us some blue shades. Okay. So, um, what we're going to create today is a roto zoomer. It's a familiar uh, demo scene effect, uh, and I think it's a nice demonstration of using the mod functionality uh, along with uh, doing a pixel effect. So, the um, Pico 8 has uh, some mod functions uh, built into it. So, if we go back to the cheat sheet, you can see them here, absolute, uh, a 10 cosine, sine, floor, max, minus, random, sine, and square root. So we'll be using this. This is not 100% Lua standard. Uh, the Pico 8 adapts Lua with some uh, specific shortcuts that we are able to use, and those include some of the mod functionality. So what we're going to do, I'm going to set up an angle. And so I say angle is T divided by 50. And then I'm going to assign the sinus function of that angle to S and the cosine to C. So now we have a sine and cosine value. Now the rest, uh, what we're going to do uh, as well is um, orient our effect on the center of the screen uh, instead of the top left corner. So uh, there are several ways to do that, but uh, the way I like to do it is I'm changing my for loop from minus 64 to 63. And then I need to add the center to this PSET function. Uh, so the effect will still be the same. Uh, so it's still working, but we've set up our code to um, do some calculations. So, to do a 2D calculation, which is basically what a rotor zoomer is, we have to uh, create some projected values, say U and V. And then for the U, we'll say, well, that is the cosine multiplied by the X minus the sine multiplied by Y. And 
V is kind of similar, but this time we are multiply the sine by x plus cosine by y. And then instead of using these x and y values, uh, we'll use these projected or rotated values. I'll remove the t here and let's see what we get. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put brackets around this and here we go. We have some nice blues and uh, a gray color. But still the effect is not really running that fast. I can slow down the, the angle a bit more. So you can see, yes, it's actually working, but not as fast. And this is because one of the limitations of the Pico 8. There's a certain limit of instructions that you can use. Uh, so trying to do parapixel effects is really not what the machine is made for. Yet here we are do, still doing it. So uh, one thing I can do is uh, increase my X loop by a factor of two. So this will essentially skip all the odd columns and only draw the even columns. So let's see what that does. Well, it speeds up the effect, um, but we're left with columns, uh, uh, odd columns that are not drawn at all. So one nifty trick uh, that we can do um, for this is uh, I'm removing the clear screen function and then I'm using my T variable, which is increased uh, every frame. And I do T modulo two minus 64. So my X loop will start at minus 64 uh, on one frame and then the other frame it will start at minus 63 and then again at minus 64 and minus 63 back and forth. So this will essentially draw half the frame uh, will have the effect in one frame and the other half of the effect in the other frame. So let's see what that looks like. That's pretty okay. It's not ideal, but we're not living in an ideal world here. Um, and you can sort of call it a free motion blur, if you will. So yeah, this is a straight up uh, demo scene uh, effect, a roto zoom. So let's save our progress. I say save roto zoom and it says saved rotozoom.p8. And p8 is the default cartridge format for the Pico 8. Um, these cartridges are stored somewhere on your hard drive. Uh, it makes a custom folder for that. So that's really hard to track down. So what you can do is type folder and it will bring you right to the cartridge folder where it stores. You are able to change this to a different folder using the uh, using the um, um, uh, uh, config file um, and do it that way. But let's see what our cartridge uh, looks like. And here we are. This is a cartridge of uh, that we just made. It has a header, it says Pico 8 cartridge, version 32. There's a bit of Lua code and then some graphics. And as you can see, Length is 999, so this already takes up quite a bit of space. And we're all about size coding, so we really don't want this. Unfortunately, there's no way to actually compress code, uh, a, co a cartridge. Um, so what we need to do is uh, we need to cut down our everything that we don't need here, basically. So what we can do, we can remove the graphics. We don't need any custom graphics. And we're just left with our Lua code and a bit of cartridge header. And we're down already to 216 bytes. What we can do uh, more is remove this comment. We'll save and we're at 191. And the last thing that we can do is something I figured out uh, myself to see just what is just needed for bare minimum cartridge is remove this line that says version 32 or 33 or whatever version you're on, but we still have to keep uh, an empty line here to make it work. So if we go back to our tick 80, can clear screen here, type load roto zoom, and it says loaded roto zoom 154 characters, which is good because uh, it runs and it, uh, it still loads. Pressing escape, and here we see the code that we're left with, control R, and it is still running. 
And also here, it's back to tokens. So 154 characters. Um, and this is actually the way that you're able to create uh, intros. Um, an intro uh, um, on most parties uh, is accepted as a P8 file, uh, which means you're, um, you can use about 229 characters of code plus 27, uh, I think, bytes for the header, uh, which brings us to 256. Um, I made a small intro for a Cinium party uh, to, like, uh, to have a proof of concept. So uh, we can have a look at it to see just what is possible in uh, this amount of uh, characters. So yeah, you get the idea. Um, there are not many uh, 256 byte intros yet, but uh, I hope uh, this seminar will help uh, you guys to create more of those. So uh, yeah, we, here we have a basic um, effect for the Pico 8. Um, so what can we do to maybe make this effect a little bit more interesting? Um, and maybe crunch it down a bit as well. So say I don't ex exactly uh, have uh, just a, a sine and cosine function, but um, I'm offsetting these angles with different faces. So they won't be perfectly aligned. So this will be a mess, mess up my roto zoomer a bit but it will often lead to a slightly more interesting and more dynamic pattern. Because these faces get out of sync, so you get some free zooming and some uh, fastening and slowing down, which makes the effect a, a little bit more interesting. So, what can we do from here? And maybe we can look at different ways that we can uh, optimize our code already. For example, um, what I can do here is maybe print something. Say, uh, roto zoomer. And then I print this at 48 by 60, something like this. Roto zoomer, and it uses the last color. So I think I have to To put it at 40, yeah, not really, 44. Okay, this looks sweet. So let's save our progress. Save, go to zoom two. Now what can we do to speed up the code or, or to optimize the code a bit? Well, for one, uh, instead of using two for loops, we can use a single one and then um, uh, extract our X and Y coordinates from that. This will save us an extra end, and uh, we'll only have to deal with one loop. So for this to work, we have our loop um, that runs from, let's call this O, and it runs from 0 to 1600, 384, which is 128 by 1. 28. Okay, and then we'll do actually extract our x coordinate, which is O modulo 128 minus 64, and the same for y is this O divided by 128 minus 64. And let's see, it still works, but we're back to the slow effect. Not a problem, we'll do the same trick as we did with the x loop. So we'll start at T uh, modulo 2, and then we'll step by 2 through our loop. And there we go. 
we have the same effect in a single loop. So, okay, we're at 180 for characters. Um, I think I'm going to leave, uh, well, there's one more optimization I will show you and then we'll move on to something else. There are some short hand things that you can use in uh, Pico 8 that are not native to Lua, but you can use, for example, T or your timer. As you can call this by using time, but you can also use T, which is uh, like a shorthand for time. And the same goes for the print function. So instead of using the print command, you can use just a question mark. And this should work the same. Yeah. So we don't even need brackets for this. That's pretty sweet. That's a nice optimization that you can use. Uh, and the same thing that goes for uh, that, that uh, also works on other Lua stuff like the tick 80. We can just stack different variables after numerics, so or brackets. So we can make like a single line of code, but there needs to be a number roll or a bracket uh, to use it. Um, that still saves us a couple of bytes. Um, yeah, I'm going to save this, save roto zoom 3 and it's saved. Okay, now let's try a different effect. Um, let's try a tunnel effect. I'm removing all of my code, going back to function draw and increasing my T. Do T is T plus one. Setting up my uh, same for loop that I did before. Uh, zero, one, eight, four, do. And X is O modulo 128 minus 64. Y is O divided by 128 minus 64. And we can do a color N is X plus Y plus T. And then T set X plus 64, Y plus 64. And um, yeah, we can do the same trick that we did before. So. 5 minus 4 it gives us some nice blues and indeed this should work. So I'm going to set myself and you guys a challenge and see if we can create an effect in 128 byte cartridge size. Well, deduct the 26 uh, 7 bytes header from that, so we essentially have 101 characters to work with. But as you can see, we're already at 104 and we're not even drawing anything. So, what kind of magic can we do to make this uh, effect and then to see if we can make it even smaller? So, let's first make the actual tunnel effect. So again, we need to have projected coordinates, U and V again. And then for the U, we're going to use the ATAN function, which times uh, 19, 24, something like that, uh, plus C. Um, yeah, and for the V coordinate, we are going to use a, um, normally we'll use a square root for this, um, but now we're using, oh, let's try this first. Square root, 
something like this. Maybe divide this by four. Um, and then we'll use U and V plus T. See what we have. Yeah. Already looks something like a tunnel. Um, yeah, maybe we can increase T by a smaller amount. There you go. Already looks a bit like a flat tunnel. So let's give this some perspective first. So what can we do to give it this perspective? We have to divide this value by a perspective value, basically. Um, one over Z It's basically what we are doing. We're adding the T here, uh, so we should be good. And we are, this already gives our tunnel some perspective, which is good. But we're already at 139 characters. And so let's save this first, tunnel. So what can we do to make this a uh, smaller cartridge? Let's speed up the effect first to the can do this. T is T plus one. Step with two through the scene. That's not really pretty. So um yeah, what can we actually uh, do here to make it smaller? What are there specific uh, Pico A tricks that we can use? Yes, there are. So I'm going to show you uh, some of the magic that's often used uh, for Pico 8. And that's we're getting rid of this for loop altogether. So we're not going to use a for loop uh, as well as we're going to get rid of this function draw so how do we do that let's get a, get rid of this draw function first so what we can do in uh, pico 8 is that we can update uh, quicker than just the draw update function so with draw you have a guaranteed update every 30 frames per second or sometimes 60 frames per second um, but we're going to get rid of that and instead we're going to create a label so we call this label f this is how how labels are done in uh, Lua, and and uh, instead of N, we'll say flip our page and go to F, and this already saves a bit of space. And as you can see, the tunnel effect still works. So up next, what we are, are able to do is get rid of this for loop and X and Y calculations entirely. And how do we do that? Well, first get rid of it. And then what we can do is we can assign x, oh, yeah, x to a random number. So we're using the random function here, 128. And we'll do, and we do minus 64. And we'll do the same for the y coordinate. And this is what's called, uh, if you want to use fancy words, Monte Carlo updating. Because we're not limited to our 30 FPS, this loop will be called uh, as fast as possible. But for that to happen, we need to remove the flap function. So what it will do, it will run through this loop, um, go to F and then uh, pick a random pixel on screen, can be any pixel, and then do the calculations for that. And because of, uh, eventually it will hit all of the pixels, it will update the entire screen. There's one problem with this. We're increasing our T manually by one, and we cannot do that anymore. So I will remove that as well, and just add T directly to our angle. And maybe this as well. And here we are. We're now updating our screen with random pixels. And this gives a nice tittery effect. That's a bit of motion blur type thing. So, uh, but most importantly, it saves us bytes because we're now at 
111. So like I said, to make a 128 byte uh, intro, uh, we can't have more than 101 characters um, on the screen. And there's still room to go. And uh, maybe to make it even harder, uh, I'm going to have custom colors here. So I'm not going to do this weird indexing thing with N, but I'm going to use uh, custom colors. So one way to do that is to use the PAL function. So we, uh, oh, my caps lock, yes, PAL. And we can assign um, a palette index with another color. So if we go here and I'll assign four with zero, we have a grayscale uh, gradient that we can use by just adding four to our color index. So let's try this. Uh, N plus four. Yes, we need to modulo this, so. Uh, put brackets around it. It's not as easy as it looks. And here we are. Here we have a grayscale tunnel effect. But the other thing that we can do is we can make a table of colors. So for example, we can uh, set our custom colors here. So let's go to the sprite editor. So say I want to have uh, like a blue shade. So I might use one and then 13 and then maybe seven or six, something like that. So we'll do this this, this, and or this. So we can just put these indexes here. So one of the ways to get fancier colors and I wanted to show you how that works. So this is our table P. Um, uh, let's put zero in there as well. And then we can just do P um, pop, 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 pop. I think this works. might be one index base. Yeah, here we go. Here we have our blue colors. Let's see if I can remove this one as well. Doesn't crash on me, so that's good news. So, custom colors, um, Monte Carlo update. So. Right, picking a random pixels, do calculations for that, and then uh, plotting the pixel and doing the go to loop. And we are now at one, two, three. That's a nice number. So let's save this. Save tunnel two. But 123 is still a long way from 101. So what else can we do to make this a bit faster? Okay. Um, what I can do is I'll can insert this number directly here. Um, let's see if this works. It does. So that saves us one assignment and we are now at 180. So that's already a nice improvement. What we can do as well is assign R to rend. I think these are five characters. Let's see if this saves anything. It doesn't do anything. Um, And leave it as this. So, what else can I do? Um, I can insert the, uh, these calculations uh, and assignments directly into my function. Makes the makes it a bit more unreadable, but uh, if you want small, that's uh, what you're going to need. So, let's try this for the U part first. 
Yeah. That works. And let's try this for the V part as well. Boom. Plus T. And it's still working. Brilliant. 110. So, still nine characters to go. Okay, let's tuck all of this code together. See what that does. 107. Still not there yet. Okay. Um, yeah, what, what can we do? Um, I can stick this P set here. We'll make it very unreadable. So let's do another trick first. Okay. Um, what I can do is do this P assignment. I can do this directly instead of using P. Like this, make it one number smaller, 103. I think we're almost there yet. And still we have our tunnel effect. Pretty cool. Okay, stick this to one line. And uh, there's one more byte that we need to get rid of. What I can do is change my change my perspective value. Has a bit too much perspective, but beggars can be choosers. Um, let me see if I can get rid of this. I have no idea. No, that doesn't seem to work. Okay, put it back. Getting that final line in. We want to make a slightly smaller number for this. Yeah, I think we'll stick uh, stick with this. It's down to a single line of code. Let's save this. Save tunnel three. Save tunnel three. We are at 101 characters, so this should compile to a 128 byte uh, P file. So let's go to folder once more. Tunnel three. Open this in Notepad. Remove this. Remove this as well. Boom. Length 127 even. So I can actually put this back, it seems. 128. Let's try to load this again. New screen, load tunnel 3. It says 1, 2, but at one one because we're removing the final enter and we're back to our perspective and here we are we have a 128 byte intro on the pico 8 um it's possible it's entirely possible so where to go from here well like i mentioned earlier i have uh, written a small guide that has uh, some additional info that i just gave in this seminar uh, it's all on sizecoding.org. It has the cheat sheet, some basic program, uh, talks a bit about the different draw functionalities, getting something on screen, some of the index shuffle tricks. You can actually do sound. So you can poke to um, a sound effect in memory and then use SFX to play the sound effect, which can give you some primitive music. There's a nice list uh, of differences between Pico 8 and TIC80 size coding. So for those that are familiar with TIC80 size coding, but less so with Pico 8, well, here are some of the differences. Like I mentioned before, the performance is more limited. There's a use of uh, instructions and tokens, and they will have a performance penalty. 
There's less code to work with. Uh, we have 229 characters for 256 bytes and 101 for uh, a 128 byte uh, intro versus about three to 400 characters for something on tick 8. But there are some um, cool things that you can do on Pico 8 that you cannot do on tick 80. For example, all alphabetic letters can be tucked against numerals 0 to 9, Pico 8. There are some restrictions to do that on uh, tick 80. For example, you can't tuck any letter between uh, after uh, A to F. Um, so yeah, that's not needed. The mod functions don't need the mod prefix, so you can use them and assign them directly. No integer divisions are needed anymore for logical operations. So that is that saves you uh, divide divide integer divide by one. Um, uh, it has some custom characters in the font. So if you use character number 128 plus, there are some special characters that you can use. Um, the Pico 8 has a Lua variant and it supports uh, X plus S and X minus S. I think it does not support X plus plus and X minus minus, but it does support this. The XOR operator are two of those instead of the squiggly sign on tick 80. Function draw is function tick. Uh, and a difference between tick 80 and uh, Pico 8 is also the poke for function. Uh, on tick 80, pokes a nibble uh, into memory. It does not on Pico 8, so it pokes four bytes into memory. So you cannot use that for that. Some tricks, most of I went through uh, here. Um, and here are uh, some, some quick feedback on the number of characters that you can use for your intro. So. This is most uh, of the seminar regarding the demo scene. But uh, one more thing that I wanted to show you guys is uh, we're not alone here. There are plenty of other scenes uh, dealing with fantasy consoles, uh, Twitter and all that stuff that do basically the same thing that we are doing with size coding. Um, um, one of those things is tweet card. So it's a hashtag Pico8, hash tag tweet card or tweet gem and these are small programs uh, usually in 280 characters or less that can be tweeted out and then will be executed uh, uh, like so and can be included like so and there's a vast uh, amount of people working with this doing all kinds of crazy nice effects using most of the tricks that i just showed you here as well doing the flip go to using labels uh, setting up a pal uh, palette like this. So it's definitely worth uh, checking out the uh, tweet card scene as well. There's a website as well by Fixing Up that uh, goes through some of the uh, more famous tweet cards and uh, explains a bit about how they work. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. And uh, yeah, that's it for me now. I'll show the tunnel once more. And um, this is it for me. I'm signing off. Bye-bye.